currently the president of the Israeli Headache Society, and uh, until recently I was uh, a co-chair for CONI Headache Section with uh, Professor Alan Rappaport. Uh, actually, I would like to present the highlights of the Headache Session of CONI 2021 that is uh, being held virtually as we speak. And uh, I've picked up three debates uh, that I would like to summarize. Uh, the first debate is the one that I was uh, taking part in, post-traumatic migraine, um, it's just migraine uncovered by trauma. And uh, the reason for this is that uh, numerous factors that may contribute uh, to the development of post-traumatic headache include axonal injury, uh, alteration in uh, cerebral metabolism, uh, neuroinflammation alterations, um, hemodynamics, uh, underlying genetic disposition, psychopathology, and of course, uh, a patient's expectation of uh, developing headache after head uh, injury and litigations uh, considerations in mind. All of this make a post-traumatic headache very confusing and unclear. And interestingly, the incidence of uh, persistent post-traumatic headache uh, uh, is inversely related to the degree uh, of traumatic brain injury. Post-traumatic headache is found in 58% of patients uh, with mild traumatic brain injury 12 months after the initial injury versus only 33% of patients with moderate to severe traumatic brain injury. Uh, acute post-traumatic headache may last up to three months, and if longer, uh, symptoms are termed chronic uh, or persistent post-traumatic headache. And other typical symptoms such as sleep disturbances, mood disturbances, and psychosocial uh, stressors can influence uh, and contribute to the persistent of headache after head injury. So I present the data that I uh, try to convince the audience that post-traumatic migraine is just migraine uncovered by trauma, as uh, most post-traumatic headaches are indistinguishable from descriptions of primary headaches, uh, I showed that military post-traumatic headache meets the criteria for migraine in the majority of uh, cases, uh, ranging from 60% to 97%, and that traumatic brain injury and migraine have uh, um, shared pathophysiological pathways. Changes in glutamate levels, uh, nitric oxide release, plasma levels of CGOP, uh, substance B, serotonergic system. And the most compelling proof is that there are many reports of successful treatment of uh, post-traumatic headache with triptans after mild traumatic brain injury. Triptan medications uh, were the most frequently used medications in post-traumatic headache cases. And that 70% uh, of post-traumatic headache subjects who used treatments reported reliable headache relief within two hours. On the other side of the debate, uh, my colleague uh, Hakan Asina showed that post-traumatic headache can resemble other headache phenotypes, uh, most often tension type headache and uh, rarely cluster headache and that there is an inherent bias when we character categorize post-traumatic headache with migraine because uh, nausea, photophobia, phonophobia are also common complications following head trauma and they may uh, therefore be unrelated to headaches. And secondly, uh, neuroimaging data had shown that post-traumatic headache differs from migraine in terms of brain uh, structure and function, and that hypersensitivity to CGRP is less pronounced in post-traumatic headache compared with migraine. And this is also explains, uh, according to Hakan Oshina, why 
CGRP targeted therapies are less effective in post traumatic headache compared with migraine. So, this is the debate on post traumatic migraine. 